not doing any product placement today? No product placement <laughs> today. Okay, this is Bob Dennis and Mark Tomerdahl. Um This is our grumpy hour where we, Bob and I, every week, whether you guys know it or not, we've been working together for a good dozen years. And uh, we commiserate once a week. Uh, and we're really not happy-go-lucky guys, so we don't have happy hour. We have grumpy hour. And more specifically, we have grumpy science hour. That's right. We complain about science. Well, we complain about bad science. We try to fix it. So uh, this is going to be all unedited, just uh, Mark and I talking four, five, six minutes at a time on a specific topic of interest to people who have uh, have a brain and they use a brain gauge or who use one of the technologies I developed like MicroPulse. And we'd like to invite you to go ahead and email us questions. I'll set this email up, uh, you know, probably about the time we post this video. GS, Grumpy Science, GS at Bob's Lab, B-O-B-S-L-A-B dot com. Anything we talk about, I'll put links and email addresses down below on the YouTube uh, main comments. And, anyway. and, don't, and don't limit yourself to questions about our technology, because we'd like to do this sort of as a Friday thing where ask us questions about any kind of science. And well, we, we prefer to be related to brain science, or at least I would. And also, I've got uh, brain, I like brain science. Uh, send us the puzzler, but make sure and send the answer. Answer. Yeah, yeah that's because right. if you we uh, can't puzzle it out, <laughs> and whoever and whoever sends the best puzzler may may win some merchandise. Yeah, you we never might know. we might have enough beers that we give some stuff away. So <laughs> give us something good. And the other thing is, um, you know, stay away from politics and religion and stuff because we don't want to go there. Right. We want to stick with things you can. We're trying to. We're trying to. That not, actually makes sense. Yeah, we tried not to make people. We're trying to make as few people mad at us as possible because we're already replete with people that are pissed off. We've been doing that for a long time. That's right. So if you don't like us, forward to the next video. Anyway, uh, Mark, what is the topic today? Topic today is that we've been, uh, we've had a very successful uh, initial Brain Gauge sales campaign. This is the first time Brain Gauge has actually been, you know, had sold in large volumes to a lot of people, a lot of hackers who are very interested in the Brain Gauge. And what we want to do is talk about some of the basic measures that are in the brain gauge. And so I'm just going to talk about one measure and uh, basically that first, and, and also I want to answer one of the questions that we keep getting from a lot of people. Uh, the first question that, that we get from a lot of people is, will the brain gauge make my brain better or will it make my brain stronger, faster, quicker, sharper, whatever? Well. First of all, we should probably say everything that we say is our opinion, and we make absolutely no claims that the Brain Gauge does anything or that any of the products that we talk about do anything or diagnose, cure, or treat any disorder. That being said, uh, we're just a couple of grumpy scientists, so you can disagree with us all you want, and that's fine because usually I'm wrong about stuff. That, be, that being Mark said, there are this all quite the a few papers in the scientific literature that show that sensory discrimination, like tasks, like the ones that the brain gauge delivers, does a lot of things called cortical remapping and improves pl brain plasticity. In short, uh, it's a little bit like selling, you know, someone that gets a brain gauge, it's a little bit like getting a set of weights. And the salesman who gives you the set of weights says, okay, I can tell you that you can measure how strong you are with that set of weights. But what I can't tell you is that lifting those weights every day will make you stronger. You cannot claim that exercise equipment that is not FDA approved will predict or prevent or treat or cure any disease because you can't. That's just the way it is. And yet people know what they know and that's how it is. So we want to talk about what scientifically we, we think is going on. Um, between Mark and I, we've got, oh gosh, I don't know. A couple hundred papers. A couple hundred papers, maybe 50, 55 years of scientific experience. Most of it, you know, pretty angry. Um, and, and more <laughs> importantly, I know a lot of smart people in the neuroscience community and they tell me stuff. That's really- I have to know I'm... a lot of smart people. You know, I, that's, <laughs> I don't have any choice. So, so anyway. So um, let's, let's talk about the simplest measure that we deliver. And that is a really common measure. It's called reaction time. 
And it's just what it says. You feel a stimulus on your finger and you respond right away. And that just tells us how fast can you respond to a tactile stimulus. Uh, and it turns out that most people are sort of in the 200 millisecond range. This has been studied since the 1880s. So talk about, there's a lot of scientific literature on it, but one of the things that you wanna look at is reaction time does change a lot under different neurological disorders. So there are hundreds of papers in the literature saying reaction time changes with autism, it changes with ADHD, it changes with schizophrenia, it changes with traumatic brain injury, it changes with all these things. Now, what I wanna mention is that just because your reaction time might be high does not mean that you have schizophrenia. That's obvious. So let's, let's take one example of one experiment. And oh, this is it's a, no, it's not a cleaner. This is a this is a high tech this tech technology malfunction here. This is a high tech uh, retractable. Okay, so I'm going to draw a graph. You want so, to draw it on a oh, yeah, do another graph. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Clean sheet. Yeah, yeah, no kidding, man. Clean sheet. All right, and draw a graph. X axis and Y axis. Okay, let's make this axis reaction time. R T. And high numbers are worse. So if you get if you really slow reaction time, three, four, or five hundred, it's up here. And what we're going to do down here is we're going to say arousal. Arousal. So what does that mean? That means when you wake up first thing in the morning, you're kind of drowsy. Drowsiness is kind of the opposite of arousal. And what happens is your reaction time is probably going to be up here when you first wake up. As you wake up, it's going to get a little better. And then here you are in the middle of the day. What happens in those hours between 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock is that you get drowsy again. It might go up. But what if you get hyper excited? So if you get drowsy, it goes back up. But now this way means, this axis means arousal is going up. If arousal goes up, what does that mean? High anxiety or something's got you very excited. Guess what happens? Will it get better? Actually, it gets worse. So when arousal goes up, your reaction time goes up. This is called a tuning curve. Don't put eyes and make that a smiley face because that wouldn't be any good. Yeah, but the thing to keep in mind here is that higher reaction time is not good. You want to have the shortest reaction time. So the best place to be is at the bottom of this curve, right? That's right. So you want to have a good reaction time. And by the way, this was, this was all done you know, in a scientific paper. And just for your own edification, those studies probably cost two fifty, three hundred thousand dollars a year to conduct that study that got that curve. But you can probably find that out all on our own. Hey man, I was on a ten million dollar study at the University of Michigan, and after about five years and ten million dollars, we determined that old people fall down a lot. So if you pay enough money, you can get really good stuff, science done. <laughs> But Mark's point, you know, is a little bit more germane, which is I think you don't have to pay a lot of money to get good right. science. Right. And, and what we want to do is eventually we want to do what we call crowdsource science, where we get people that use the brain gauge to try different things and say, how is my reaction time affected? So that would be one of the things that we'd like you to email us. You know, what is your experiment? Does dark chocolate make you better? Does getting a good night's sleep make you better? Or worse, staying up all night make you worse. And if somebody suggests a really good experiment and they win merchandise, then yeah. all the better. So what we are proposing is if you want to be part of science, the science that we do, we are proposing that you take part. You can take part either with scientific instruments that we provide. Um, there may be others that you can use. You don't have to buy our stuff. And um, we also are opening it up to you to suggest to us there's you know studies that you may want to to see if other people would want to participate in because we're reaching out to the self-hacking uh, community to see you know basically take science out of the hands of people who've been doing nothing with it for 40 years which is pretty much they're easy to find they're at every university so we're proposing that you that you if you're interested you can take part and we will um, you know we can't do everything and some things are not realistic to do for reasons that we will explain clearly to you. 
but we'll try to make it so that if you're really interested in knowing something and, and enough people are that we will actually set it up so that we can generate an answer. We won't name names of other. Yeah, we won't name who you are. The only people <laughs> who, you know, will be named are Mark Tomdahl and Bob Dennis. And, you know, we're already in trouble for enough stuff. So it's cool. We, we're not really worried about it anymore. Um, but that's kind of where we're at. And so the thing to remember here is that Mark's talking about a specific aspect of one thing you can measure with the brain gauge really accurately, but it becomes really useful information when you combine it with all of the other things that you can measure using the brain gauge. So we have to kind of deconstruct it for you, but it's most useful when you put all that information yeah. back together. A couple more things to mention about reaction time. A lot of people, there's a lot of online cognitive tests. These are very common, particularly in the sports concussion world where people... Uh, they, they flash something on the screen and you hit a button and you say, oh, that's my reaction time. Well, that reaction time, as we've measured it in the lab, has a variability between 30 and 150 milliseconds. It's pretty, it's pretty broad, so it's not very accurate. So when I say variability, that means your answers could be really bad. And another, uh, another feature of the brain gauge is that we've actually done a study to see how accurate the brain gauge is and the Brain Gauge Pro is actually about a thousand times better than most commercially available online cognitive testing tools. Uh, the precision on the Brain Gauge is about a third of a millisecond. On the, uh, on the Brain Gauge Pro is a third of a millisecond. And you know, with the Brain Gauge, you can actually do pretty good reaction time, not quite as good as on the reaction on, on the Brain Gauge Pro. Yeah, so, so what we're talking about really as a scientific instrument, the brain gauge, is really a scientific instrument. And the problem that a lot of people have in the quantitative self and self-hacking community is that they'll buy stuff that they think is a scientific instrument, but it's not. It's just like, you know, some kind of uh, smartwatch that tells you how far you walk. But when people study these things, they'll put like four different smartwatches on one arm. You can check. BBC has posted this. Many other news agencies have and they can be off by as much as like a hundred percent like one watch on your right arm worn for exactly the same time on exactly the same day can tell you you're only walking 2,000 paces a day and another one can tell you you're walking 14,000 on the same arm on the same person at the same time so a lot of these things that give you numbers the numbers are not very accurate and what mark is pointing out is that when you take sort of online reaction time testing and, and brain function testing things you're using computers and keyboards and stuff that are just, they're not scientific instruments. They're just basic human interface devices. So they're not accurate enough to give you any real reliable, accurate insight in, into how you're functioning. And what we are doing with our companies, cortical metrics and, and micropulse is we're giving you stuff that is reliable and consistent and measurable and well calibrated. But anyway, that's just, I think we're just about out of time, Mark. Did you me, uh, want to say anything let me, else? Let me just mention one other thing. The reaction time measure on on your Pro Tools comes out and is displayed as your speed, that is your speed metric, and it's compared to normative values. And the other value that's of importance, that's related, that you get from the same measure, is reaction time variability. And that's actually related to your focus. So if you can focus and you answer every single reaction time task the same way, then your variability is actually very low. Uh, if it's very high, uh, then you need to work on it. But <laughs> that's sort of what uh, people with attention deficit have very, very high uh, reaction time variabilities, which results in a low uh, focus score. Okay, that's, that's probably, probably enough for today. Uh, yeah, I've heard that attention span is no more than 15 minutes, and we've gone about double the uh, – I'm out of beer. So the rule is <laughs> – it's one beer, one beer, per one session. video, and so we got to follow the rules, which is about the only time here that we actually do follow the rules explicitly. Um, we'll try to do this from time to time, uh, and please send us your questions. And, Thanks, and don't be surprised if we're wearing the same clothes the next time you see in the video. We tend to wear the same thing every day of the week. I've got two T-shirts, so I change mine. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Thank you.